On this stop of the Brewing Network on the road, I'm at the Cascade Brewing Barrel House in Portland, Oregon with Ron Gansberg. Thanks for having us out here. It's a pleasure having you guys out here. It's a great weekend. So I've had your beer before. We get it down in the Bay Area in California. I've had some of your bottles. Your Creek is one of my favorites. But here at the Barrel House, you're really able to showcase a lot of the other things that you do. You've just shown me your, your barrel room, which I have to admit is enormous. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, this is a place where we have enough uh, trade and clientele to bring out a, lo a lot of our sours. Right now we have eight on draft and two from the live barrel, as well as four vintage that we're serving right now out of the production side. One thing that I took note of even coming in the building is it says Cascade Barrel House Sour Beers, even on the building, which, let's be honest, that wouldn't work in every part of the country. That would turn some people off. But in the Pacific Northwest, kind of works. It does absolutely. We are the house of sour and that is our stock and trade here at this establishment. We have all of our barrel blending and aging. This is much like a, a Belgian blending house where they would take in all of the barrels and age them and eventually put them into bottle. So let's take an example. You were just pouring me some beers right out of the barrel. Very, very generous of you. Awesome beer. And one of them, I think you said had, uh, was it elderberry? Absolutely. Tell me about that beer. Well, it's uh, we, we try and work with as many different fruits and, and we taste the beer and, say, and think what that goes with. So we had several barrels that we thought just spoke to us, elderberry. Okay. And so what do you what do you look for when you're looking for fruits? Are all your beers the same base beer and then you add these other things or do you change every one of them? All of our beers are basically different. We we look at, at these beers as like the keel of an expeditionary vessel from like the 19th century going on its journey. And we try and, and imbue these with certain attributes and then we send it off through time and yet right after that we'll do another which is slightly different with different attributes with different strengths and flavors and we'll have a whole series of these through time and then from this we can learn more rapidly and also gives us greater opportunity for varied uh, fruit and other types of blending and, uh, and commingling. And how about yeasts then? I, did you say to me that you guys have your own strain of bread? No, well, we, we, the yeast that we use is, we have a special relationship with the Normal Abbey in Belgium, the Abbey Normal. I see. <laughs> so everything's just normal here. Well, yes, ab yeah, <laughs> for the Abbey Normal in this hall. I yeah. see. Uh, and the beer I had was, I think you said, from 2009 also. Tell me how important age is to a sour beer. Well, there's a certain period it takes to sour these. It's a period about four months for us. It can vary depending upon how, you know, how much bacteria is present. That's but quick, four months. Four months, yes. Uh, it continues on, but at that point it's, it's hardened off. And, uh, and that means it's already sour. But then after that, there's a slow maturation through the oak barrels where there's a certain transpiration of oxygen that helps to age and mellow it over time. Each barrel goes through its own life, you know, and each barrel is different, even if it's from the same, the same batch of beer and, and put in the barrel and, and treated the same, you know. So it's, uh, the variation is just mind boggling. Okay. A lot of our viewers are home brewers, and uh, from my constant badgering about how great sour beer is, they're getting more and more into it. And of course, from their own research. If you were to give me a couple of tips about how I could make a good sour beer, what would you tell me? Well, I would uh, do a lot of small batches and patience, and also too, you know, the more that you lay down side by side, the more opportunity you have for blending. But also, too, don't ever forget to blend right from the tap or right from the bottle. We do an amazing amount of blending with our finished beer, and from this, then it gives us all types of inspiration and, and ideas. So one barrel can turn into an infinite amount of different beers from blending? Absolutely. Yeah, and we blend off the taps all the time. Okay. All right, Ron, well, I appreciate you having us out here. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate the, all the attention and, and having folks come through. So thank you much. All right. This segment is brought to you by craftbeer.com, celebrating the best in American craft beer. And we'll see you at the next stop.